So now in the previous video, we established the fact that because we have a complex multicellular, for the most part, fungi, we have complex multicellular structures within the body that aid in the fungi's overall function, overall goal of survival, which would be through getting absorptive measures and uh, getting food through absorption, and also reproduction, specific and specialized reproductive structures that we touched upon in the previous video. Key theme right now is specialization. The best example of fungi specialization is going to be seen in this next uh, flowchart. And this next flowchart is going to be entitled Mycorrhizae. This is a very, very complex, a very, very important evolutionary ecological structure that fungi exhibit, that fungi have, um, some at least, that really show us a lot of big themes of biology. So, what are mycorrhizae? Mycorrhizae can be defined as mutually beneficial, mutually beneficial uh, relationships between fungi and plant roots. So we have a mutually beneficial relationships between two individuals, between fungi, that's what's in question right now in this lecture, and also uh, closely related, uh, closely in, in terms of location, the plant roots. So fungi and plant roots when you have a mutually beneficial relationship, when you have a plus slash plus ecological relationship between these two things, you are looking at a mycorrhizal relationship, a mycorrhizae. So, what can we say about the fungi part of this story? Well, what we can say is that mycorrhizal fungi, those that exhibit this mycorrhizal structure, this mycorrhizal relationship, mycorrhizal fungi, are going to benefit somehow. How do they benefit? Well, that's, they're going to benefit um, initially because of the relationship with the plants, but first and foremost, the plants will get something as well. Mycorrhizal fungi are actually more efficient. They are better than their plant counterparts at something very important. They are more efficient than plant roots, than the plant roots that they're associated with, at getting soil nutrients. Now, why would they be more efficient at this? You should be able to understand from our body structure a part of the flowchart. These soil nutrients that are gotten, that are received, that are absorbed, are best absorbed by mycorrhizal fungi because they have this great surface area to volume ratio. They have this great ability to pre-digest food and absorb food. They are made to absorb, and thus they can get soil nutrients better than their plant root counterparts that they're associated with. Therefore, we can state the following. What they do is, since they do it better than plants, they essentially are going to deliver, specifically, you should remember this, phosphate ions. These are critical for plant growth. They deliver phosphate ions and also other um, inorganic minerals to, to the plants. So this is our first plus of our plus-plus relationship, our mutualistic relationship, delivering phosphate ions and minerals to the plants. Okay, so who's benefited right now? Right now, the plants have benefited. Why have they benefited? Because fungi are really good at absorbing things. They're better than plants at doing it, and thus they're going to deliver some of the things that they absorb from the soil, called phosphate ions and also minerals, towards the plants. Okay, but now we have to get to the other plus. How did the fungi get something out of this relationship, this mycorrhizae relationship? What happens is the following. In this situation, we'll say that the plants will then reciprocate. The plants will supply fungi with organic nutrients. Will supply fungi with organic nutrients. Now, why would plants even uh, why would fungi even want these organic nutrients? Fungi are heterotrophs. They need to get stuff from their environment. But look who's giving the stuff. The plants are giving away these organic nutrients like carbs, basic carbs. Like plants are very good at making sugar, right? Through that photosynthesis um, specialization that we talked about. So plants are going to reciprocate this offer of the mycorrhizal fungi and give these organic nutrients back to the fungi. There's the other plus of our relationship. It's a plus-plus mutually beneficial relationship between fungi and plant roots. So now that we've established this, what we can state is the following about both of these points. Um, we want to state that mycorrhizae fungi, most of the time this is going to happen between most 
vascular plants have mycorrhizae, some sort of mycorrhizal relationship with fungi. What are vascular plants? These are plants that have uh, elaborate root structures and a stem that grow outside uh, of the soil, that grow pretty tall, that have this phloem and xylem, things that we'll talk about a little bit later when we talk about plant anatomy and structure and function. But just remember that the most of the plants that we know that are vascular will have mycorrhizae attached to their roots underneath in the soil. Why in the soil? Because the soil has nutrients. Who can get those nutrients? The fungi can get those nutrients. Give them to the plants. What do the plants do? The plants say, here, thank you for that. I'm going to give you some of the organic nutrients that I'm very good at making. Plus plus relationship that we see in this mycorrhizae. Now, final thing to understand about mycorrhizae, there are two specific types of mycorrhizal fungi to remember. So let's classify them. Let's put some names to these individuals because mycorrhizae is very general in terms of uh, understanding what fungi are. It's just a type of relationship. But the two types of mycorrhizal fungi to remember are the following. They are the ectomycorrhizal fungi. Key part of this word is ecto, and we'll get into that in just a second ectomycorrhizal fungi. Ecto refers to the exterior, the outside, and we're talking about fungi that are going to be on the outside of something. Where are these found? These are found, and this is a bit of a lengthy definition, but uh, bear with me. This is going to be fungi that forms sheaths, forms sheaths of hyphae. Remember what hyphae are, functional units that are very good at absorbing. Um, makes sense, right, using this structure. Form sheets of hyphae over, on top of, on the outside, ecto, ectomycorrhizal fungi, over a root. Why a root? Because this happens at the plant roots. Um, at, over a root, and also they grow into the extracellular spaces, into extra cellular spaces that are outside of the actual cell of the root, okay? Um, extracellular spaces of root. So these are essentially going to be twisting and turning in between the cells, not through the cells. They're only on the outside portions of the root, and thus they're only going to be twisting and turning, this ectomycorrhizal fungi, um, in between cells through that extracellular matrix um, that all cells have, that all multicellular structures have. Now, a good way to juxtapose this, a good way to look at the sort of not the opposite, but a different form of mycorrhizal fungi is to look at arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. In this situation, we actually have a little bit more of an invasive fungi. This is a little bit more non-invasive. It doesn't really go through a cell and actually absorb through a cell or exchange nutrients through the cell. It's around the cell, ecto for that reason. Our buscular is a bit of the opposite. This is going to be when we have uh, the extension of hyphae. So these, are hy these fungi will extend the hyphae through cell walls, actually through, not around or over, but literally through the cell walls of their, their plant counterparts, through cell walls of root cells, because we're focusing on the roots, because that's where mycorrhizal relationships happen, and into certain tubes that root cells possess. Um, in these tubes, these tubes will lead to, tubes lead to a uh, root cell. And when they lead to the root cell, they specifically get to the root cell membranes. And when we get to the root cell membranes, it's very important to understand that this is where we have a lot, a lot, a lot of organic nutrients being made, where we have a definitely a need for these cells uh, to get these soil nutrients, to get these phosphate ions and minerals to the plants. This one is a lot more invasive. It goes through the cell walls, literally dumps the soil nutrients there, and gets the organic material, organic nutrients from these root cells right back into its hyphae. That's a very important relationship of these mycorrhizae. Same idea in the ectomycorrhizal, just a little bit more on the outside, the twisting and turning structure, I like to think of it. So let's just remember, mycorrhizal fungi, critically important ecological relationship between fungi and plant roots. Many, many of these mycorrhizal relationships are, are so strong 
that plants would not be able to survive without them, nor would the fungi be able to survive without the plants. That's how well this relationship has evolved over the course of evolutionary time.